where, where I am, you, we truly care about kids. You know, everything is kid centered. You know, it's not about me. It's not about, you know, us as adults. It's about every decision is made on what benefits our kids first. and thanks for tuning in to this edition of Future Ready's Leading Through Unprecedented Times. So excited for this episode to have my good friend Chip Baker with us here today, a teacher, a coach in Texas. Chip, why don't you go go ahead and say hello to our audience and introduce yourself if you could. Yes, sir. Well, first off, I want to say thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to be here. Uh, You know, love what you do, love how you do what you do. And I feel, you know, fortunate to be a part of what you have going on. So thanks for having me. Um, you know, myself, I'm just an ordinary guy working hard to achieve some extraordinary things. Uh, like you said, teacher, coach in, che- in Texas. I'm a fourth generation educator. Uh, blessed and fortunate to be raised by some amazing people, as well as be around some awesome folks to learn from in my career. Um, this is my going on my 22nd year in education, teacher, coach, I've been a head coach, been athletic director, uh, and I'm in Conroe, Texas, which is close to Houston, and uh, an author, and I have a YouTube channel and a podcast called The Success Chronicle. So just doing lots of things to, you know, hopefully uh, make a positive impact in our world. Yeah, amen to that. You know, and a shout yeah. out to the Success Chronicles that you do. You know, and part of that, and and being a, a big fan of your work, and just seeing the the content and the stuff that you're sharing out around success, you there's so many reflective aspects to it. So let's take a moment to reflect on the end of this past school year. Um, obviously, drastic changes. Teachers were asked to change things overnight in their work but yet they rose up and they did it. And so take just a few minutes to reflect on this past year. What are some lessons learned? What are some silver linings? What are some things maybe that were just real challenges or things that might've been impossible? Talk to us just from a reflection end of this past school year. I think, you know, from from this year, um, I think from everything that's gone on up to where we are, I think it's important to understand that we have to cherish the moments. Uh, you know, um, I think, I mean, things could be better. You know, you always want things to be better, but they could be way worse. And so I think the, the secret sauce is to be able to have the ability to be in the moment and just truly enjoy uh, the moment. You know, we have to, uh, you know, take advantage of opportunities, you know, that we have and uh, spending that quality time with family and, you know, there's, there's, I don't know, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, we get busy and doing our thing, you know, there's lots of things that we want to do that we say we don't have time to do, right? Well, this, I think this is really giving us an opportunity to just slow down, uh, reflect, relax, and, and get those things done. And so I think it's truly been a blessing to have the quality family time, truly been a blessing to be able to hunker down and dive in and really learn some things I've been wanting to learn. Um, and then I think on the flip side of it too, you know, with, with technology, uh, it's amazing. You know, from this, we're going to have uh, so many new ways to reach and teach kids and uh, communicate effectively. So, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, as you should be. And, and um, thanks yeah. for reflecting on that. You know, I've heard concerns out there from parents, from some educators around this idea of learning loss, or, you know, you, yeah. you hear pushback of on one side, I've seen, you know, kids have learned better this way. On the other side, I've heard kids, <laughs> kids haven't, and, you know, obviously everybody wants to get back. And so this yeah. idea around learning loss or concern for missing skills, if it was, you know, at least a quarter of a year, if not almost a third of a year that had to be different, you know, as a teacher, as a coach, where, what's your thoughts? on that in terms of skills that have either occurred or haven't occurred um, around this idea of learning loss and just concerns parents or educators might have? I think for me, I think we have to just do the best we can with what we have, you know, and and give it on based on what we're allowed to to do through our state, through our, our school districts, you know, whatever we're allowed to do. I think we just have to do the best we can with what we have. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big see where we are and let's move on guy. You know, I'm not a big, hey, what about back then guy? 
because I'm really want, want to work to, to get better. So I think for me, it's important to just assess, you know, assess where you are. Uh, of course, you're going to have to have some good teaching. You're going to have to have some review and reteach, uh, you know, but then from there, you know, just, you know, do the best you can with what you have for your kids. I think that that's important. Yeah, and every educator I know have, has, over the past couple of months have been doing just that, the best that they can, yes. working hard. Um, if anything, yeah. talking about self-care and slowing it down, like you were saying, and making sure to breathe, you know, and those are also That's vital it. aspects of it. You know, as we look towards this coming school year, states are all over the map in terms of recommendations. Yeah. Uh, you know, at this recording, some states haven't put anything out yet. Um, but as we get closer to next school year, what are you hearing? What are you, what are you guys looking at in your district around? you know, ways to keep kids safe, you know, this idea of social distancing, I like to refer to it as more of physical distancing, because I think we need to be more social than we have ever before, um, or possibilities for scheduling, like you know, what are some things that you're hearing in your district and you guys are looking at? Well, as of right now, uh, we've been given to clear the clear to, you know, in a week or so have workouts, you know, kids can start working out and start doing some things. I think, you know, the summer schools, the in-person summer schools have been canceled, but they're doing some things for special cases online, you know, to, to help kids and do those kind of things. But, um, you know, as I know, you know, everybody's planning to hit the ground running like normal when school starts. Uh, now, now who knows? We may get another, oh, what, oh, you know, but we just have to be ready to adjust. And that's life, you know, you're going to get some, some curveballs thrown at you, but, the, the, the better that we can adjust, the better we are on the other end of it. Yeah, so well said. That adjustment is just what educators have been growing to do. I think educators have always adjusted and always tried to move themselves forward. But I think we've seen so much of that in the past couple of months. So talk to yes. us about professional learning. As somebody that you know does a lot of that, as somebody that obviously values it in your own work, what does professional learning mm -hmm. look like? What do you anticipate this coming school year just to really support educators in any of the changes that they might need to make? What does that look like in your district? Or what are, what are some effective practices that you've seen you know, being real active online. I think um, one cool thing is it's been some amazing opportunities out there to learn and get better. Um, you know, I think our administration, uh, I think our school district, I think they've communicated very well uh, on, you know, okay, this is what we have. This is what's been mandated. You know, this is how we're going to do and work through this. Uh, here's the supports. You know, so not only are they are we giving supports for kids uh, and, and the community, of course, but, you know, for teachers as well, you know, um, you know, you talked about the, the self-care and the, I think a big deal is the mental, uh, mental game and everything now, uh, you know, and so, you know, I think, you know, there's uh, services available for those that need counseling or anything like that. And so, and I'm really proud. Uh, the area that I'm in, uh, the people that I'm around, that I'm blessed to be around, it's really a good situation for everybody involved. And I think it's really been cool because even within that, uh, we have like different groups, you know, teachers checking on teachers, you know, teachers checking on kids. I mean, you know, it's it's been assigned, you know, and so I think that's really been great because like you don't feel like you're out there on your own. And, and of course, like the, the, the learning curve of, of going from in-class learning to, okay, we're doing everything online, you know, or you know, make this adjustment or communicate with the parents on this. Oh, wait, this changed. And so, I mean, it's, it's all everywhere, right? But the ability to have effective communication and really just work, you know, together for one goal has really been a blessing because I think, in our area, I think we do it very well as far as taking care of kids. Yeah, and I can see that pride coming out as you talk yeah, about it. Don't, yeah. don't ever stop being proud of the work you're doing, right? Man, it's you, great. Yeah, you know, Chip, one of the core aspects of Future Ready Schools is, is equity and making sure, especially yeah. our traditionally marginalized groups, are front and center in our decision making. So how as a teacher, how as a coach, how is, um, you know, how are you seeing in your district that we're prioritizing our most marginalized students, whether it's special ed, 
said, whether it's um, via race, whether it's from those that lack the economic resources that they need, how are we making sure in, in your district and what have you seen to make sure that those students make, make sure that they're front and center on our decision making and our priorities? Again, I want to commend uh, my district uh, and my school where I am for, um, I don't know, just doing great things to take care of kids. You know, uh, wh where I am, you, we truly care about kids. You know, everything is kid centered. You know, it's not about me. It's not about, you know, us as adults. It's about every decision is made on what benefits our kids first. You know, and then we'll work backwards and figure everything else out. And, I, and at first, I want to say that, man, I'm, I'm truly blessed to be in a situation that is that. And so, of course, you know, they're looking at health and safety first. Um, you know, we're, we're striving to try to hit everything in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, I think first, you know, we have uh, food or meal pickups, you know, at, at some locations in our district twice a week. You know, so those kids that, you know, would normally go without where school meals are their meals, you know, we're still trying to hit those kids and take care of them. Uh, as far as technology, there may be students that don't have computers or iPads. And, uh, you know, we were able to, you know, check some of those out and make sure that kids are taken care of with the technology wise, you know, uh, Wi-Fi, all of that stuff. So it's it's been really neat there. They've been distributed to kids. And then, you know, the other deal is, you know, some may work better with hard copies or, you know, the computer is not very good for them. Well, you know, they've done that. We have systems set up to where, you know, at each school there's filing cabinets outside the school where, you know, they'll work for these classes. Then once another file cabinet for completed work. for So, I mean, it's really been, it's really been a neat situation to see how everybody in this area has gone above and beyond to take care of kids. And really like, there's no excuse to not continue and grow. Yes. You know, like, like, like there's, there's, there's no excuse to like, we're going to get better. We're going to help our kids and there's no excuse. So yeah. it's been, it's been cool. Well, you're valuing the bottom line, you're valuing so many of the right things by putting people yes. first and your kids first. So let me ask you specifically yeah. about that. You know, it's the human connection is so core yeah. to, to what we preach at Future Ready Schools to just a course of education, whether you're a teacher, principal, superintendent, regardless of that role. So how, how do you as a teacher, how does your, uh, or as a coach, how is your team really working to keep relationships and people at the heart of all decision making? You've certainly shared a whole bunch of examples throughout the podcast but when you talk about relationships and people being at the core how do you guys make sure that you prioritize that well i'm gonna share this quote from one of my former pastors with you and this is a quote that i start out in my second book this is what the quote that i start the book with and the, the quote is our life moves at the speed of our relationships you know and that oh. comes from pastor yeah from pastor danny Green. i mean and you know that but, but like when you really just reflect on it and think about it, like it's true. I mean, you know, those of us that are doing, uh, you know, blessed to do and achieve and be around great things is because of the great relationships that we have around us, you know, and those that, that don't probably need better relationships around them. And so, um, I don't know, it's, it's been great. Like I said, you know, people first, kid first, um, you know, it's important that we do the little things right to take care of people. Uh, you know, we'll get to the education, but at first, are you okay? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, are you good? Okay, well, if you're good, then we can move on. You know, yeah. but, but if you don't do those things first, nothing else matters, right? Yeah. So you have to make sure you take care of people. You know, it's been checking, like I said, technology groups, Zoom groups. Our admin has continued to rotate, you know, at our school where the school is accessible for people that possibly need it. And, and really, I'll just go back, like I said, from the last question. I, they've done it. We've done a great job of not making any excuses for not to be successful. 
Yeah, well said. Now, I know you're a really humble guy, but here's what I'm going to yeah. say. I'm going to ask you to, to share the success chronicles and some of your work there, if you would. At Future Ready, part of what we try and do is really amplify great stories and amplify what people are doing for kids yeah. or amplify how people are breaking down walls for equity. You know, with the success chronicles, you're amplifying many, many voices as well. Give you a moment to plug that, if you would, because I just think it's just really, really uh, aligned with the work that we do at Future Ready Schools. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get the future ready myself with the Success Chronicles and do what I can do, my little part, right? But uh, the Success Chronicles, really what I do is I just, I interview people from all walks of life and I share their stories for positive inspiration and motivation. And I mean, it's it's everyday people, it's Olympians, it's, I mean, you know, stars, it's athletes, I mean, it's 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 people all over, but but the common goal thing in there is you know we're all striving for success and to to make an impact in our world. And so, my thing is like you said, uh, you know, yes, truly truly humble, but hungry, like like really hungry to be successful and have and driven, and not H U N G like H O O O hungry, right? <laughs> humble and hungry. Oh, and, that's uh, awesome. So just work it working real hard to to achieve uh, great things and 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 shine light on others and show appreciation and just do my part to give back and so and like you said in plugging it you know the the thing i learned a long time ago in my life that i know we're educators and i just want to warn you this may not be uh grammatically correct here but uh you know it ain't about me i learned that a long time ago right <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, it's not about me. No, it ain't about me. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, what I'd like for you to do is, you know, go check it out, please. Uh, any is YouTube channel, podcast, all platforms, uh, uh, social media is Chip Baker, TSC, Twitter is Chip Baker 19. And if you see something on there that you like, um, you know, like the normal, you know, like, subscribe, follow, all of that stuff. But bigger than that, if you think of someone that it'll help make a positive difference in their world, just please share it with them. Yeah, that's awesome, Chip. And I, I commend you. I encourage our listeners to check that out. Really a big fan of that yeah. work because you're amplifying voices, many, many, you know, just incredible people yeah. from all walks. And I think we all need that hope right now in our work. So Chip, let me, yeah. let, let's wrap up with this piece. You know, as you look towards this coming school year, you know, so many, um, we're not sure. We've still got lots of things on the horizon. We're not sure exactly what they're going to look yeah. like. But what advice do you have for school and district leaders as they're about to kick off a brand new school year, even with certain many uncertainties? What advice would I give to them? First, I kind of get close to them and I tap them. And then I'd say, hey, what we do makes an impact. Uh, you know, it's important that, that we continue to just give our all and know that the little, because, you know, we're human, you know, and sometimes we may only have 40% or 60% or whatever it is. We got to make sure we give that today, right? Because the little that we have to give today can make a huge difference in our world tomorrow. Doesn't get much better than that, my friend. That's Chip Baker, everybody. Thank you, Chip, for your time today. Appreciate you. Keep leading the way. And thanks Thank for your you. time today on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Go get it.